It actually feels great to get the pandemic material out there. And now we're going to see what the next chapter is, which looks like World War III, which of course will be hilarious. <laughs> Comedy's not going anywhere. I've, I've said this. I have tattoos of the jester, right? Because the jester was the only guy who could make fun of the king, but it had to be funny or else they chop off his head. And I like that. I'm like, yeah, that's how it should be. We're, we're, we can make fun of anybody, but don't forget to make it funny or else you'll be a politician, which no one likes. <laughs> Clap for Alonzo Bolton, everybody. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Give it up for everybody on the show. Hanging out Saturday night in Philly, the city of brotherly love. Okay. Just saying, I've been walking around. Philly, Philly's like a working class city full of people who don't like their jobs. Like, ah, we working class, but this is bullshit. Nah, I'm kidding. I've been having fun, man. I was surprised you guys are still wearing the masks. I like that. I love my mask. They were like, no more mask. Shit. They got to fight me to take my mask away. I'm a large black man that can legally wear a mask anywhere I go. I've been waiting for something like this all my life. People just get angry. I'm like, wait, wait, you got to make it fun. There's a big loophole in the law which says you can wear any mask you want. That's it. I go to the bank with a welding mask on, huh? I don't give a shit if you scared, I'm safe. I'm a big, bald, black man in a mask. You think we all looked alike before? <laughs> Love this shit. Right, but you can't do it because people are angry. That's been the thing, man. The last couple of years, everybody, Ugh! anything that goes on, people are mad, right? Uh, last month was the Winter Olympics. You, you guys get into it, you watch? Yeah, see, nobody cares. <laughs> The Olympics used to be a big thing. It was like we'd all come together. It was a break. I, I still love it. I love the Winter Olympics. I ain't gonna lie. I love sports, man. I do. I'm a big sport. I'll tell you why. Because sports helped me pick up women. That's right. Because because I, I play, pretend I used to be an athlete. See, because I look like I could have been an athlete. And that's close enough. You don't know how many women think I played for the 89 Clippers. And that works, because no one knows who played for the 89 Clippers. <laughs> there are guys who were on the 89 Clippers, not sure I wasn't on the 89 Clippers. <laughs> they like, man, bad as that team was. If he said it, he was probably there. I don't know. <laughs> I'm the same way with the Winter Olympics, man. That's a hook. They can't do the Summer Olympics, right? Because those sports... Though, you, you know, nobody's going to believe it. Like, I, I can't pretend I can run 100 meters in nine seconds or jump eight feet on a high jump or dive 30 feet from the bar. But you watch the Winter Olympics, half of those sports, you're like, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> right? Everybody's watched curling and be like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got a bowling team. I could be, I could be an Olympian. That's right, as far as women know, I was the third man in the four-man bobsled <laughs> in the 1996 Winter Games. Because no one knows who was the third man in the four-man. The only person who knows the third man in the four-man bobsled is the fourth man in the four-man bobsled who had his head up the third man's ass. <laughs> for one minute and 34.43 seconds. I love Winter Olympic sports, man. Like, you watch Luge. It's great. They just put the guy on the missile and just kick him down the hill, right? Just, he's flying down. The, I love the announcer on the Luge when he talks about how the dude is steering the Luge. I'm like, oh, yeah, he's in full control. Yeah, he's just laying on that missile headed to the bottom. 
The bottom guy in a two-man luge, that's a friend right there. Right? <laughs> We need it though, man, we need to break. Right? Because everyone's angry, you know? If you are an anti-vaxxer, you ain't gonna like the next 10 minutes. I'm serious, I ain't got no time for that bullshit. People be asking me, are you vaccinated? Yeah, why are you vaccinated? because there's a vaccine. <laughs> what the hell, I, I, I don't even argue with them. You people are, I don't argue with anti-vaxxers. I'm like, nah, I'll just wait a year, year and a half. You'll be done. <laughs> I'll tell you the problem. I'll tell you the, why you can't win the fight against anti-vaxxers, because stupid don't get tired. <laughs> you ever fight stupid, you ain't got a chance. Stupid just keeps coming at you. Smart's like, man, I'm worn out. Stupid's like, I'm just warming up. <laughs> it is amazing how, like, can you imagine how smart the scientists and the doctors, the, the immunologists had to be to come up with a vaccine against COVID? They wasn't ready for stupid. <laughs> they were too smart. And this is not a new fight. This fight ain't new, all right? And I'm talking now to people who you were around before the internet, right? Because the younger people, you've lived with the internet, you don't know. But there used to be a time when we had two groups of people. You had people who know shit and people who don't know shit. <laughs> and, and back in the day, the people who didn't know shit respected the people who knew shit. <laughs> And you would be in a situation, it might be work or social situation, and the people who know shit would be talking about, well, I know some shit, yeah, I know some shit. Today. <laughs> Let's talk about shit we know, I know shit. And the people who don't know shit would kind of hang in the back. <laughs> and they'd be quiet and you'd be like, well, why aren't you talking? I, I don't know shit. <laughs> I don't know shit. I'm gonna I'm keep my mouth shut, I'm gonna try to learn some shit. And then they invented the internet and the people who know shit began to communicate with each other and they were like, well, I know shit. Yeah, well, so do I. We're gonna share knowledge. And the people who don't know shit got on the internet and said, wow, there's a lot of us. There's more of us than them. And we can buy guns. And that was the end. That was the beginning of the end, right there. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. It, you, you can't, I've been on the wrong side of that. Everyone, I've been on the wrong side. I've been the guy who don't know shit, you know? I love jazz, I'm a big jazz fan, and I'm lucky enough to get to work with some of the greatest jazz musicians in the world. I do these jazz cruises, I've hosted jazz festivals, and I got to talk with Herbie Hancock about music, and I don't know shit. <laughs> See, he's Herbie Hancock, and I play CDs. <laughs> and, and I was like, don't, don't hurt yourself trying to explain this to me, I'm an idiot. I'll be over there with people who don't know shit. <laughs> if you're a scientist, the scientists who invented this vaccine, they were like, we did it, we did it, we, are gonna open up the world. We have come up with a vaccine against COVID. And they're like, no. What? <laughs> the hell you mean no? Mm, they not take, what? Why aren't they taking a the vaccine? Mm. Said it'll make them magnetic. What the fuck? <laughs> how, how do you argue with that? How do you argue when someone looks at you with a straight face and says, no, don't take the vaccine, you know, it'll make me magnetic. I'm like, you're right. You should not take the vaccine because we are trying to thin the herd and uh, if we can get rid of the anti-magnetic people. Stupid don't get tired. 
you can't argue with that. I think the only reason they came up with the magnetic routine, right, was, was to make the Bill Gates story sound reasonable. Ooh, don't take the vaccine. You know, Bill Gates is tracking you. What kind of ego do you have that you think Bill Gates cares about you? Bill Gates created Microsoft. Bill Gates is worth somewhere between 100 and $150 billion. You think at any point he's thinking about you? I love that they're tracking me, people. Oh, the government is tracking me. Okay, first of all, if the government was looking for you, it'd take about 15 seconds to find your stupid ass. All right, this ain't a movie. You're not Tom Cruise. The government, government will find you instantly. And I promise you, Bill Gates, a man with $100 billion, at no point is he standing around his living room saying, man, I wonder where Keith is at. Gates ain't worried about Keith. I'll take it a step farther. If a man with a hundred billion dollars is looking for me, I'm gonna be easy to find. He gonna have a hard time getting rid of my ass. Every time he opens the door, how you doing, Mr. Gates? Understand you've been looking for me, here I am. Matter of fact, I'm gonna go find Keith for you. I'll be right back. It is, it's phenomenal. It, it, you can't argue with it. They just keep coming at you. They keep coming at, oh, don't take the vaccine. You don't know what they're putting in your body. Really? Really, you don't know what they're putting in your body? Let me tell you something. I was broke back in the day. Back in the 80s, I was broke. I used to eat gas station hot dogs. You know what I'm saying? That's right, Arco gas station hot dogs were two for a dollar. Okay, once you've eaten gas station hot dogs, you think I'm afraid of a vaccine? Man, shoot that shit up. Don't, don't even clean the needle. Fire away. I'm good. I'm good. I got gas station hot dog in me. I'll be all right. People sitting there talking about, I don't know what they're putting in their body. Meanwhile, they hooking up on Tinder. All right, if you banging something off Tinder, you ain't worried about what they putting in your body. Matter of fact, you might need another vaccine. You... <laughs> Donald Trump said, white people can't get the vaccine. And I was like, I don't know what world you're living in. Because I went to a white neighborhood to get the vaccine. I wanted to make sure I'm getting the good shit. That's right, I got me a, I got two shots of Pfizer and a Moderna chaser, you understand? <laughs> Ain't going no black neighborhood, get some bootleg Johnson and Johnson, man. <laughs> Stupid don't get tired, huh? Well, you know, the, the thing about the pandemic was the first time in 25 years my life was quiet, right? I was home and not working. So getting back to work is like a giant exhale, like, we're back, let's do this. And it, it's almost like a reset. And people are ready to laugh. It, it is fascinating, the level of stupid and anger. Everybody just, uh, just mad, right? Mad, you know why? Because we have an incredibly short memory, that's why. That's why, it, it's two years ago the pandemic started, 2020. And if I came to you in 2020 and offered you half of the things people are mad about, you'd have been happy to have them. If I came to you in October of 2020, after you've been locked down for five months and said, look, I got a vaccine, but it's gonna make you magnetic. <laughs> You'd have been like, get me a wooden doorknob and get me the hell out this house. I'll just be sticky for a while, I don't give a shit. People forget how bad it was in 2020. 20, are you kidding me? I'll tell you how bad 2020 was. The murder hornets came, and we didn't even care. We didn't even, there were two inch stingers, and the hornets could kill you, and we were like, what else you got? Well, you got bugs, did they bring toilet paper? Because if they ain't bring toilet paper, fuck them, fuck their little bugs. I don't... Locked in a house, bored as shit. 
I was so bored when my phone rang and it said scam likely, I answered that. <laughs> I got someone new to talk to. I want to know what kind of scam you got. <laughs> solar panels? Hell yeah, I want to talk about solar panels. <laughs> For the next three hours, we don't hang up, you call me. We're going to do three hours on solar panels, then we're going to talk about extending my car warranty. <laughs> it was ridiculous, man. They sent the kids home. Ooh, parents didn't like that. They sent those kids home. Suddenly, are you smarter than a fifth grader became a real question. <laughs> a lot of parents found out the answer was no. Nope. At home school, it was kicking parents' ass because they found out who their kids really were. I was laughing the whole time because I don't have kids. I don't. People don't believe that. You know, I get profiled on Father's Day. I go outside, be like, "Happy Father's Day!" Like I don't have kids. You know, you got kids. You play for the '89 Clippers. You got kids. I Never had them, never, never saw any need for hungry, unemployed people living in my house. <laughs> right? But yeah, because parent, parents found out who their kids really were, right? Because it changed over the years. Right? I know people my age, you know, when we were kids, when we got in trouble, that was all ass. Why? Because you were a kid. Nobody want to hear your side of the story. You were a kid, it was your fault. When they sent that note home from school, and we were so scared, we brought the note home. <laughs> right, that's how scared we were, because we knew if our mother found out there was a note and we didn't bring it home, she could legally kill you for that. <laughs> She'd be in court, and the judge be like, why'd you kill a child? He ain't bring home the note. <laughs> Bang, not guilty. <laughs> we'll sacrifice him and teach the rest of them. <laughs> yeah. But then it changed, right, over time. It changed, it became more and more about the child. And the child is special, the child's perfect. My child is perfect, no, my child didn't fail, you failed. You're a teacher and you failed, my child is perfect. Yeah, then they sent them little bastards home. They found out who they really were. I have one friend, he actually called his son's teacher. He was on the phone with his son's teacher, he's like, how do you not hit my child? <laughs> no, 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 I'm hitting him. I'm curious how you don't, because this kid's as dumb as a box of rocks. What the hell? Half the states in this country legalized weed just to keep dad from killing the kids. <laughs> Wasn't all bad during the pandemic. One thing I did enjoy during the pandemic, I like pandemic traffic. Right? There was nobody on the road. I live in LA. In LA, we name our freeways according to the number. You know, you'd be on the 101, the 110, or whatever. To me, whatever freeway I was on, that was the speed limit. I did 101 on the 101, 110 on the 110. Right? I got on the 405, I was like, I'm gonna try. I got pulled over too, cop caught me. You know how they walk up on you. They, you know how fast you were going? All I did was go, <coughs> he was like, get the hell out of here. <laughs> and for that brief moment, for just that second, I knew what it was like to have big tits. I was like, wow, this, <laughs> this works in all situations. <laughs> oh, man. Anger. That, that was the go-to for the last few years, man. Because it's, you know why? It's easier to get angry than to think. It's easier to get angry than to listen. So whenever people hear something, they just react with anger and they, without thinking, right? Black lives matter. Fuck does that mean? We picked the three simplest words we could find. <laughs> really don't know how to break it down any more than that. <laughs> I'll tell you what it doesn't mean. It doesn't mean white lives don't matter. Doesn't have anything to do with white lives. Has to do with the fact that cops are killing black people and we're looking for justice for these murders, right? Listen, thank you, thank you. Right? If I say save the whales, I ain't saying fuck the dolphins. 
I'm just saying the cops killing a lot of whales. And we'd like you to look into this. Angry. Karen, Karen got mad. Karen got mad because Karen started out. Karen started out the pandemic. She had a good run. Karen call the cops anytime she wants. There's black people out here doing shit. I see one crossing the street. And there's another one over there driving a car. And then the cops got tired of Karen. Everyone got tired of Karen. Like Karen, shut your ass up. And then Karen go, oh, don't call me Karen. Don't call me Karen. Calling me Karen is like using the N-word. It's like, slow down, Karen. I don't know, your little inconvenience might not have the same impact as uh, slavery. I'll tell you the difference between saying the word Karen and saying the word nigga. I just said Karen 15 times and not once did I look over my shoulder to see if there was a Karen around. You know, ain't nobody saying nigga without checking for niggas first. You be looking under the table, behind the curtains and shit. Right? Also, Karen is a real name. There, there are women named Karen. Now, I'll be the first to admit, we as black people can be somewhat creative <laughs> in naming our children. But I promise you, there ain't no little black kid running around actually named nigga, all right? There's, who's that? Oh, that's little nigga Robinson over there. Pretty fast, I heard he might go pro, I don't know. No, huh? not happening. Anger, man, you, you name it, people are just mad. Right? Let's go Brandon. That's the most bullshit thing I ever heard. Like, if you don't like Joe Biden, at least man up and say, fuck Joe Biden, right? Because I didn't like Trump, and I never had a problem saying, fuck Trump. You didn't even have to ask me about Trump. And you say, hey, you think it's gonna rain Friday? Fuck Trump. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of cloudy. I like Joe Biden. You know why I like Joe Biden? Because if you ask me what Joe Biden did today, I don't know. I like not knowing what the president's doing every five minutes. To me, Joe Biden, he's like that old guy at the corner that as long as you see him walk the dog, you know he's all right. Every now and then you just look, oh yeah, that's Joe with the dog, he's all right. You don't see him for a couple of days, you're like, hey man, what happened to Joe? Joe, all right? Hey, have you seen Joe? Oh, there he is. Yeah, he's all right. He's, all right. he's on a different schedule, I guess. He's a... They hate Joe Biden, man. Joe Biden needs to resign. I'm like, you know who gets a job if he quits, right? I don't think they understand how this Constitution thing works. He quits, the black lady gets a job. Oh, you think you angry now. <laughs> and I'm fine with Kamala Harris as president. You know why? Because she's a black woman. People are like, that's all you need? That's all I need. I've been listening to black women all my life and they've never been wrong. Not even once. One time I thought a black woman was wrong and two years later I was like, I'll be damned. <laughs> She was like, I told you two years ago. <laughs> you think we have any problem out of Putin? We had a black woman as president. One phone call to Russia. Don't let me have to come over there. <laughs> Putin sit his little short ass down. Like, I'm sorry, I didn't mean nothing. I just forgot myself for a minute. Now is the time where people want to laugh. And here's the thing about the cancel culture, right? You know where you don't see the cancel culture? In the audience, right? It's a, bu it's a bunch of highbrow people talking about don't say this, don't say that. But as you can see from this show and any other show, when people come to a comedy show, they're there to laugh. They're not there if you say something that, you know, we're all gonna storm out or whatever. So People still have a sense of humor. Comedy still works. It cuts through. It cuts through a lot of bullshit. I've been trying to get canceled. 
good for my career. <laughs> you think I'm kidding. If I can get canceled, man, think numbers, you just start filling up clubs and theaters and shit. In that spirit, whatever you are tonight, race, color, religion, nationality, whatever you might be, fuck you. <laughs> and, 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 and I want you to take that personal and if you'd be kind enough to record it and send it to TMZ, <laughs> boost my numbers. <laughs> it's utterly ridiculous what people get mad about. Tucker Carlson lost his mind because the green M&M took her boots off. <laughs> and this is how bad we are as a society. You all know what I'm talking about. That's how powerful stupid is. It's taken over and we all have to know stupid shit. He's mad. He said, he said that she used to wear sexy go-go boots. And it's like, how long have you been whacking off to the green M&M? <laughs> that this is an issue for you. Because I love women in heels. I'll be the first to admit, I think it's sexy as hell. I love women in heels. I've gone out on dates where a woman is show up in flat shoes. I'm like, where are you going? <laughs> you put your shoes on. We going out. <laughs> but I also understand when women say after a while, heels hurt their feet or hurt their back. The green M&M been wearing high heel boots since 1971. <laughs> she deserves some sneakers for a little while. She... Right. Mr. Potato Head, that was a controversy. Whole controversy over the gender of Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head. And I'm like, what are you doing to the plastic potato <laughs> that the gender matters? <laughs> if you are violating the plastic potato, the gender is the least of your problems. <laughs> But the other side just is crazy, right? Just the left, left gets upset anytime you say anything. They hear a word, they lose their minds, right? Let's get this trans shit out of the way. Okay, because that was the big one, you know. Just Dave Chappelle made transgender joke. Oh, but Jay, Dave's a transphobe. Listen, I don't think Dave Chappelle is a transphobe. I think 90% of the people complaining about Dave Chappelle didn't watch the special. They didn't watch it special. They, they heard... They heard one word and they lost their mind. Because if you watch the whole thing, you understand Dave's where he's coming from and his point of view, and that and that's okay because he's a comic and that's his point of view. I couldn't do it. I did so many interviews over Dave Chappelle. You have no idea because I'm on NPR, right? And when you're a black guy, let me stop lying. When you're the black guy on NPR, <laughs> something goes down the phone. They started calling me and asking me about Dave Chappelle. I was like, hey, shut up, listen. My remote has an off button. If you don't like it, turn it off, you know? You know, what do you, you get them said? Then the dumbest question I had to answer, this guy asked me, he said, do you think Dave Chappelle's gonna be all right? Is Dave Chappelle gonna be all right? Is it, I, I don't know. I don't know if Dave Chappelle's gonna be all right, because this weekend I'm booked over at the Boise, Idaho Chuckle Hut. <laughs> You know, and I didn't see Dave's picture on the Chuckle Hut calendar. I, he's over there at Netflix making $20 million a week. So yeah, yeah, somehow I think Dave's gonna get by. I think so. As a matter of fact, if you talk to him, ask Dave how the hell I'm making it. Cause I'm out here getting Chuckle Hut money. I don't know. It has nothing to do with Dave Chappelle or, or transgender. That's not the problem. The problem is us. The problem is our society. We're too hung up on your sexual orientation. Everybody's worried about what you are so they know how to treat you, right? They want to know, are you straight? Are you gay? Are you trans? Are you bi? Are you queer? What are you? What box do I put you in? What are you fucking? What are you fucking? What are you, what are you fucking? <laughs> I don't care what you fuck. If it says yes, go on and fuck it. <laughs> I ain't got time to follow you around. Get in your business. That's your personal business, right? That is the thing. It's your, it is your personal business. I don't care, but it's a way to judge you because now I know, like I say, you're trans or you're gay or you're queer. Now I know what you are, what box to put you in. I, you want to give me some personal information to judge you on? I don't need your sexual orientation. What's your credit score? <laughs> yeah, and see, they won't tell you that. They won't take, give me a number. They know, I, I don't care what you're fucking. What's your number? All right, because I'll tell you right now, I will take a flaming gay 720 over the manliest 580 in the world. All right? You give me a transgender 800, I got a solid cosigner. 
I buy any car in the world. They'd be like, is that a trans woman you're with? No, that's an 800. Give me the paperwork and shut your ass up. Mm -hmm. I admire the trans community in that they identify themselves. They identify themselves. That takes a lot of courage. Most of us never in our life have to stand up and say who we are. They do that. They say, this is who I am. You refer to me as he or she or they. And my only question is, what credit score do they have? <laughs> All right, because if they are below 700, I don't need them. A lot of men worry about getting fooled. What if I get fooled? What if I get fooled? Well, then your ass got fooled. I, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you, you know. It, it happened, right? I'm not talking about, you know, some, some big, fat, hairy guy with a blonde wig, you know, if, unless that's your thing. If that's your thing, that's fine. I ain't judging, but I'm saying that if a small, feminine man decides he wants to be a small, beautiful woman who happens to love giving blowjobs, well... <laughs> Who am I to not help him through college? <laughs> Tuition ain't cheap. You do what you gotta do. I, I like how many guys I lose on that joke. <laughs> Bunch of guys like, I was with you on the credit score, but now I can't. You done crossed the line. Not all bad during the pandemic. I, had, I, had, I got a dog. I got a pandemic puppy, right? That was great. Yeah, I love my dog, man. That, it's funny, it's funny how when you do something like that, right away people want to tell you the worst about it, right? Why do people do that? The minute you do something good, they want to poke a hole in your balloon. You know what I mean? I got a dog, I got a Great Dane, right? Yeah, I love my dog. Like, oh my God, a Great Dane. You got a great, 35 pounds of poop every day. <laughs> every day you got to carry a garbage bag. You got a Great Dane? You know they can eat a couch. You go out, you come home, your couch is gone. Oh my God, you got a Great Dane? You know they can pee on a flat screen. Yeah, you gotta buy a new TV every Friday. Dude. Right? And I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you had a bad experience with big dogs. I love my dog, my dog's goofy and fun. But if you talk to someone who had a bad experience, they're gonna tell you not to do what they did. Right? I'm sure if you were to talk to Ted Cruz's mother, <laughs> she would tell you don't have kids <laughs> right she's like oh yeah they start out cute but holy shit what an asshole this one turned out to be huh? um i think having a dog is great people give you advice i love that they read the book got a dog gotta read the book did you read the book gotta read the book yeah i read the book you know who didn't read the book dog didn't read the book <laughs> He don't care about the damn book. Uh, they're like, oh, you want to housebreak a dog? You got to put, put down the pee pads, right? You put the pee pad by the door, and then they pee on the pad. Then you open the door, and they pee outside. And that, that all sounds good. He had a different book. His book said, pee any way you want, and the human will feed you. And then his book was far more accurate. He's great. I love my dog. He's an L.A. dog. I'll admit that. I definitely have an L.A. dog, you know, because I grew up with country dogs. Right? My grandmother, she had a farm in South Carolina, and they had country dogs. I don't know if you've ever been around those. Those are the toughest dogs you ever see. They live outside, never come inside. My grandmother wouldn't dream of a dog coming in the house. They live outside. Like, what if it rains? Ah, they dig a hole. <laughs> right? They leave them outside. And they'd feed them, they'd mix table scraps with dog food and put it outside. And if that wasn't enough, that dog had to hunt down some food. You see a squirrel on the ground, you'd be like, ooh, that's gonna be your ass. You, you should have stayed in that tree, you know? Right, they never went to the vet. They don't go to the vet. Country dogs get sick, they eat some grass, they throw up and they keep on moving. And those dogs would live 20, 25 years. They would, they'd live forever. I got my L.A. dog, man. My dog coughed and threw up. Zoom, right to the vet. <laughs> Mind you, if I cough and throw up, I just lay down. <laughs> you know, but I had to get him to the vet. I get him to the vet. $900 later, they're like, he has allergies. <laughs> now, what kind of weak-ass dog <laughs> has allergies? 
I'm like, well, what's he allergic to? Like, well, we don't know. What's he doing? I say, he's throwing up. So he throws up dog food. He said, yeah, they like, mm. might want to give him something gentler on his stomach. Try like uh, organic salmon. Like, what? <laughs> what? So he throws up. I got to buy him more expensive food. This is L.A. I've dated this woman. <laughs> I know how this game works. Yeah, had to, had to do that. Had to get him the, the organic food. They gave me a special shampoo. Got to bathe him two or three times a week with the shampoo. Right, his paws itch, you know, he's always biting his paws. So they gave me cream, I gotta rub the cream between his toes, right? And I do that, cause he's my dog, I love him, he's my buddy, right? My girl was like, you wouldn't do that for me? And I was like, I'm glad you realize that. <laughs> you say we don't communicate, yet you understood right away <laughs> that if your toes itch, you pretty much on your own, I can't. Don't look at me like I'm a bad guy. She has opposable thumbs. <laughs> he does not have thumbs. He needs my help. Yeah, so I still got the dog. <laughs> mm. Relationship didn't quite work out. Not her fault, my fault, you know. I'm not a relationship guy. I'll be the first to admit that, man. I'm not. I'm not good at relating. You know, after you get to a certain age, you gotta accept the fact, well, maybe not every woman in the world's crazy. <laughs> Perhaps I have a few issues of my own. <laughs> she said I don't communicate. And I was like, what? what? What do you think I do for a living? And then it was pointed out to me by another woman who I don't date, a friend. She said, no, Alonzo, you don't communicate, you talk. Communication involves listening. And when you listen to a woman, you don't listen to her words, you listen to her feelings. And the comic in me just wanted to say, what? But I didn't, I didn't, it was, it was a cheap joke and it was right there. But I, but I let it go. But I don't, that doesn't make sense to me. How do you listen to feel like, I can listen to Adele's feelings, she's always crying. So I, you know, Sade, I can listen to Sade's feelings. Some guy left her 30 years ago. She's made a hundred million dollars off of that. She, you know, I get that. But I don't know how to listen because, because when you listen to women, there, there's a lot of words. It's a lot of words. There's too many, I can't listen to all the words. I'm not being misogynistic unless it'll get me canceled. <laughs> And you just tell them, oh, that son of a bitch is a misogynist. <laughs> I had to study this, ironically, for a talk show. On average, women use three times as many words a day as men. A day, because women speak in detail, and, and it's three times as many words a day. So what about a week, a month, year, or years? There are men who've been married in excess of 20 years. How many words have they had to listen to? <laughs> it's mind boggling. And you could tell, you could tell the old veterans because they have a filter built in and they don't listen to all the words. They only hear their assignment. She'll just be talking to the grocery store. Milk, cereal, gas, and he's like, I'm gonna I'm go to the grocery store and get some cereal and milk. On the way back, I'm gonna get gas in the car. And she's like, I'm glad you were listening. He's like, oh yeah, I was listening, I was listening. She keeps looking at him, you leave that man alone. How long are you guys together? 16 years, his filter's almost there. Not completely, but he's working on it. No, I listen, I admire, I'm not good at relationships. People in long-term relationships, 20, 25 years, I admire that, you know why? Because that's real love. That's real, they've been through some shit, you understand? That ain't that Hallmark card bullshit. Right, that Hallmark card, oh, I love you, I love you more. Oh, you're beautiful, I love you so much. I'm not mad, no, I'll never get mad. Don't go to bed mad, I couldn't be mad at you, shit. <laughs> You talk to a couple been married 25 years, they wake up mad. <laughs> Good morning, shut your ass up. <laughs> All right, we'll work through it. We've been here before. Right, yeah, and it works for women and men. I got a friend, she been married 27 years. 
She'd be sitting there just looking at her husband, just look at him. <laughs> just breathing. <laughs> in, out, in, out. <sighs> That's love when you just get mad at somebody for breathing, huh? I respect that. I'm not that good. Uh, you guys are good, man. You guys are a good crowd. You hear jokes and you laugh. I know that sounds obvious, but no, man. Things have changed. People are angry now. And you say, like I say, you say something, you know? They, they trigger words, man. It's words, you know, and, and, and I, I say it over and over. The most important word in the English language is the word context. See, that's what people have lost track of. What context? Now, you guys know you're adults. You came to a comedy show, right? There's a comedy stage. A comedian might say anything up here. You might not like it. You don't have to laugh, but you understand in this context, you say anything you want. That, that, that doesn't apply everywhere. You know, I'll say things here that I won't say, like, I don't know it. CVS, <laughs> right? which came up, you know, I was at CVS, and I think I can speak for all comedians when I tell you that we appreciate being recognized. When you see a comic in public like, hey, you're really funny, I'm like, thank you, now we've shared a moment, now it's over. But it was a moment, you know. I was at CVS, and there was a guy, he didn't understand the rules. You know, so he see, you know how it is at CVS, they have that kind of S-shaped line, and at the front, there's that vague area, right, where it's a little, like, you're not sure who's next, yeah. right? You gotta, and, and you gotta, like, cover what's in your basket. Like, you gotta buy a greeting card. Like, you buy a birthday card to hide your ointment, right? Because you don't want to, you don't want to see you buying ointment, so, you know. So I'm in that vague area, and he's at the back of the line. He's like, hey, Alonzo, you're really funny. And I was like, thank you. And he's like, I like that gay shit. Now we got a problem. <laughs> Now, now we got a problem. Now everybody in line is, what's a gay shit? There's gay shit? He got ointment. He got ointment and gay shit. I don't know. And I'll tell you what the gay shit is. I used to do a joke about going to the gym. I said, man, I got a new goal at the gym. I want to get in a gay shape. Right? Because gay men are ripped. Like, I don't know how strong you have to be to blow a guy. <laughs> And that was the joke. And that joke's appropriate for adults at a comedy show. That joke wasn't written for afternoons at CVS. I need to be yelling at, ah, oh, you strong enough to blow a guy, ah! No, I'm strong enough to go to Walgreens. I'm no longer welcome at CVS. Words, man. People get in trouble now over words. They get in trouble over words they said 20 years ago. Words change over time. Language change. Everything changes over time. I'll give you an example. Smoking. We used to smoke anywhere. Club like this, there'd be a smoking section and a non-smoking section, right? Like the smoke was disciplined enough to stay over on this side. Oh, our smoke is well behaved. Don't worry. And then people got tired of secondhand smoke and they didn't want to smell it. They got sick. And they said, you want to smoke? You go outside. Right? Then people got tired of walking through the cloud coming in. They were like, no, you can't smoke by the door. You got to go down the block. Right? Then they just got to listen. You want to smoke? Go outside, make a left, go to the corner, make a right, and fuck off with your cigarettes. Right? <laughs> right? Unless you're smoking weed, then come back. You can come back and smoke weed. It changed over time. Words. There are words we used to use we don't use anymore. Midget. We used to say midget. Right? Now you say little person. I have a friend, he's a little person, you know, he was, he was like, don't call me midget. And I wanted to mess with him. I was like, that's relatively new. <laughs> 10, 15 years ago, I could call you midget. <laughs> he ain't miss a beat, look right at me. He said, 100 years ago, I call you nigga. I said, all right. <laughs> all right, that's one, you get one. <laughs> and you just used it. <laughs> Lucky ain't no black people around, I have to whip your little midget ass. <laughs> Wouldn't look good, my giant nigga ass whipping your little midget ass. People walk by confused. What's going on? Niggas fighting a midget. I've never seen anything like I don't know, Who do you root for? It's a nigger and a midget. I don't know which side. I, I see that's an example of what I'm talking about. That's a comedian using two horrible words 
in the context of a joke to make a point, and all of you understand that. Don't try this at home. <laughs> all right, I, I don't know you, I don't know what you do for a living, where you're from, but tomorrow, people ask what you're doing, you can't be, man, I was at Helium, you should have heard the nigga midget joke. You can't say that. <laughs> that would be a terrible thing to say. And if you see a black little person, for God's sake, shut the hell up, don't even. Thank you guys, that's been great. You guys are great. <laughs>